my name is Santiago Juan and I live here out on my farm in San Lorenzo farm in the Cairo district of Belize in Central America. I'm a farmer, I grow some veggies and a little bit of livestock. The changes of agriculture in the last hundred years in, in practice there's not been much change. It is, the main objective is still to produce plenty of food as cheaply as possible and as diverse as possible. The main agricultural crops have mostly maintained uh, very similar or the same in some cases. In Central America where we are from, things like corn and beans and avocados and the general basic crops like tomatoes and hot peppers and sweet peppers, the root crops like cassava, sweet potato and all the other root crops, the yams, have maintained, have been the same over many, many centuries, maybe three, four thousand years. Pumpkins, as you can see here, one of the, the local pumpkins, some of the local beans, those have maintained. The technology of how we are growing and, the, and all the science behind it has, has changed dramatically. Um, from the controversial GMOs to conventional farming with the use of agrochemicals, to the farmers who still are farmers that do organic or using integrated pest management practices. So in its fundamentals, it has remained the same or similar, but in its application, there's many, many different concepts and opinions and practices out there of which we're in constant debate and debate is good. IPM, is one of those uh, terms utilized in agriculture and it stands for integrated pest management in in the management of pests and we understand pests as an insect or it could be also a weed or a bird anything that is harming our crops that's a pest to agriculture and we understand as integrated pest management as the utilization of all the possible tools that we have uh, you know, arsenal of tools to manage pests. And when we say to manage pests, it's not to eradicate pests or to kill pests. Because what is a pest to someone in a crop might not be a pest to another crop. Um, and there's many examples of those. Some, some insects that are pests to a crop might be pollinators to another. Uh, they might, some birds that might be destroying a crop might be propagating a crop for others and so forth. But integrated pest management, which is the IPM, is where we use everything that we know, traditional, conventional, all the innovative ways. Sometimes it's using plants uh, like lemongrass to repel insects, um, intercropping to have diversity in crops, using very local resilient crops that have been adapted to the, to the environment, um, and in some cases using modern uh, insecticides or fungicides and in other cases using our own um, homemade concoctions some people use detergents or, or hot sauce you know hot peppers the famous neem plant and there's many many and it's the utilization of everything not not only one application of a of a knockout insecticide but the approach is to utilize everything we have including the selection of good varieties and utilization of space, um, sunlight, shade. Uh, very importantly, something that is not discussed as much is soil fertility. Integrated pest management has to do a lot with your soil. Rather than trying to compete with an insect, you can make your plants grow faster by having better soil. So rather than cultivating a plant, if we cultivate soil, the soil will then cultivate our plants. Feeding our plants properly on organic matters um, has proven to, to be a better approach when it comes to pest infestation. Knowing the economic thresholds of plants, not always if a, if a leaf is being damaged by, a plant, by an insect or a fungus or a virus, does it mean that the final yield is going to be damaged? One of those very good examples is sweet potato. Sweet potato can take a, a tremendous amount of leaf loss or foliage loss 
and not have too much of an adverse effect on the total yield of the root or the tubers. Cassava is another very good example and there's many examples like those. Our, our methods here on the farm are, are a combination of, of a little bit of everything, traditional and modern. Uh, out here we use a drip system which can be considered modern. Um, it's, in our opinion it's one of the best ways of applying and, and using water efficiently in the spots that we need them immediately. Um, in Belize we have very defined uh, seasons for growing. Uh, we, 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 have, we like to say we have two seasons, the wet season or the dry season. And the dry season when it's dry, it's very dry and it's wet, it's very wet. So our drip system is used as common sense would tell you in the dry season. In the dry season, we tend to have less insect pests. The, the, the pest load is much less in the dry season. Funguses are less, viruses are very minimal, um, bacterials are, are pretty much inexistent in the dry, and insects are, are very easy to control in the dry season. The wet season, although the plants grow much more uh, vigorously and faster, we also have a whole heap of other pests, including weeds. So if you notice here, on this little plot we have, this is about an acre plot of an assortment of, of vegetables. We have traditional vegetables that are native to this part of the world, like beans and squashes and pumpkins and cassavas, uh, a bit of corn, another crop we call chocho. Those are native to us. And then we have the, the Western crops, so the European, European crops. We have like the kales, the lettuces, um, we have cucumbers, we have watermelons, we have guavas, uh, a bunch of everything actually. The way we combat weeds, in this case, as an IPM approach for weeds, is by using heavy amounts of mulch. Our mulch comes, we have a stable on the farm, and uh, our mulch comes from the stables. So it's very practical for us. I believe that one of the better ways of having a backyard garden, be it commercial or just for family use, is no till or minimum till. In this case, we have minimum till. We just prepare the area where we immediately will plant. With a post hole digger, we dig a hole, we fill it with compost, and we run our drip line tapes, we cover it with compost, we cover it again with mulch, as maybe as four or five inches of mulch, and we plant our our crops where the drip uh, is on the drip line, you know. So if it's a six inch drip line or a 12 inch drip line or a four inch drip line, we just plant our crops out. And we are constantly planting. We don't wait to replant where a crop is. A good example is here we have a Chinese cabbage and we have lemongrass next to it. Over here we have lemongrass and we already have our corn germinating. Um, we have kale over here and beans. Uh, our squashes are intercropped with our with our beans, and so forth. We we have everything very very compact, very mixed. Here we have some beans that are about to flower, with some corn that's just germinating. We have some kale that actually has been heavily hit by the diamondback moth. Right next to it, we already have a cucumber coming. Um, so it's for what we do, this works for us. It's constantly planting, constantly applying mulch, as much compost. I have no, no limits. If somebody asks, we do need a ton or 10 tons. It's whatever you have, just keep applying. And the same with, with plants, just keep planting. A lot of us traditionally are concerned about plant density and nutrient availability. And all of those are, are academic arguments um, that have some science behind it. But you can also just plant and keep planting. Whatever is destroyed by the insects, you keep planting. Eventually you will have a crop. So when it comes to the use of insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, and all of the things that are designed to kill uh, in agriculture to kill whatever pests we are having a trouble with. One of, one of the big topics today is the use of 
a herbicide which is the active ingredient is glyphosate there's many many names on the market but the active ingredient is glyphosate and um, probably the most common name in which, it, which people will recognize is Roundup and there is a lot of talk around the use of Roundup and glyphosate or glyphosate in widespread agriculture it is now scientifically proven that glyphosate is showing up in the food chain. That is something to be concerned of. On, there's arguments that it has enhanced uh, the, the productive sector. It has made the availability of, of, of food um, to, to the masses in the world because it has made farmers' uh, jobs easier, make food cheaper to produce. And all those arguments might be true. I don't know if they're absolute truths, but they might have some truth to them. But the other argument against it is that the health aspect of the food we're getting and the toll that it's having on other aspects of society. Our hospitals are full, full of people with cancers and kidney problems and liver problems, all sorts of problems. We have people that are intolerant to gluten, uh, which is of concern because gluten is a major part of, of the diet for the human beings. And all of these intolerances, allergies, uh, cancers are being narrowed in more and more to the way we're farming, to the excessive use of agrochemicals in general. But glyphosate has been a topic of conversation for the last maybe 10 years and it has only intensified because there's a lot of information that is showing the medical world that glyphosate has adverse effects on the human being and for that reason uh, in this on this farm we stay away from glyphosate and there's there's ways of doing it although this is a small scale this is only an acre we don't use any herbicides at all of any kind and this is all our weeds are suppressed by our mulch and mulching has a number of things as you all know, if you're into farming, either commercial or just backyard farming, mulching helps with weed suppression. It helps with a, a, a slow release of nutrients to the soil. It gives the, the right environment for the soil underneath. It, it retains moisture. It, it, uh, it helps with, with, the, with the fungus that grows in the soil that are beneficial to our plants. So there's, there's multiple functions of mulching um, for me it is the number one choice for not having to use a herbicide and not having to use my hoe because hoeing is tiring so if I have an ample layer of compost or mulch and it's constant we will suppress weeds over a period of time weeds no, are no longer a problem on, on this plot it's true initially it's difficult it's hard work but it's safe, it's clean, and it's healthy. To all be up.